Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating this very cool, relatively simple uh, clock here in Flash using ActionScript 3.0. Now, there's some things about the clock that aren't 100% ideal, but again, the, the whole idea is just to churn out a quick clock and it's even going to have the date, so it's going to be date and time. Uh, and this is this is how you do it. So uh, real quick, I'm just gonna preview the movie, and this is basically what we have right now. I'm recording this. It's December 5th, 2009, and it is 4:11 in the afternoon, military time. That would be 1611, and then we also have the seconds happening there. Now, obviously, maybe to make this more ideal, we would throw a zero next to the seconds, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of correction like that. But again, we're not gonna spend that that much time working on this. The whole idea is we want to get in, create a nice simple clock here in Flash, and you know we want it to work. So we're going to close that, and I'm going to go over to my blank document here. And basically, all this is is I've you know typed some text out uh, and just created this sort of almost speech bubble. It's a rounded rectangle with a little triangle coming out of the bottom. Converted them to movie clips and just stuck them on a layer called base. The first thing I want to do, uh, and if you're just starting from scratch, just create two new layers. I'm actually going to lock up my lower layer there so I don't accidentally select any of that artwork. Name the one layer type and uh, the top layer name it AS. So we've got one layer we're going to use for action script, one layer we're going to type some text onto. Now I want to set my uh, fill color to this sort of pinkish reddish color, one of these colors down over here. Uh, so something like that. Uh, just something that's going to really strongly contrast that, that kind of egg yolk orangey yellow color. And then I'm going to go grab my text tool. And I'm going to set a few settings here for my uh, text tool here in the properties panel. Number one, we want to type with dynamic text because we want to be able to talk to this text using action script and say, hey, look, you dynamic text field, update as I run, as my code runs in the background. We want you to change. We want you to update because, you know, the time is always moving and seconds are always ticking. So dynamic text is a must. Choose a font. I'm using a free font called Chunk 5. It's kind of a cool font. It's actually this font right here that I have running across the top. It's kind of a nice big bold chunky font. Uh, the size is 35 points, uh, letter spacing 2.0 and uh, the color again is going to be that, that kind of pinkish reddish color and that's pretty much all we're going to worry about. Oh also format, you just want to align it to the center. Now that we've done that draw out a text field here uh, over the top half of our rounded rectangle all right, like so we can move this once we go. But I'm just going to type the word DATE in all caps. Grab my black arrow tool and just drag this down and sort of try to center it here in this rounded rectangle. Just roughly center it in there. All right, like so. Grab that uh, dynamic text tool again and again draw another text field out here on the bottom. And we're going to type the word TIME. And again, drag that sucker down. Try to line them up nicely and, you know, just roughly center it up. All right, great. So now that we've done that, we have our date and time in place. Now, what we want to do is we want to give these instance names because we want to be able to talk to them using action script. We need to be able to refer to them. So in order to do that, we need to give them an instance name. I've got time selected here. So over here in the properties panel, my instance name will be something simple like time underscore txt. Adding that underscore txt to the end is just going to give you that little tooltip prompt when you go time underscore txt dot then Dream, or excuse me, not Dreamweaver, Flash will give you a little pop-up that's going to say, all right, here are all the different things you can do with this particular object. So we're going to go ahead with date, and we're going to name that date underscore txt. So we've got our instance names. They're all in the type layer there. I think we're ready to go and start doing some action scripting. We're going to go right up to Window, uh, Actions, note the hotkey F9. And voila, here's our actions panel, kind of covering everything up, but don't worry about it. Uh, one thing we do want to make sure, though, I'm just going to tap F9, make sure that I'm on my action script layer. I want to keep all my action script up on this uh, layer, just as a matter of organization. All right, F9 to bring that action script panel back. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new timer. So we need to store that within a variable. So we're going to say var, and we're going to name this variable looper, because that's all this timer is going to do. It's just going to loop. We're going to uh, specify that the data type is a timer, and it's going to be equal to a new instance of the timer class, open parenthesis, and we're just going to type the word 100. That's the delay on this timer, and this timer works in milliseconds, so this is going to be repeating super quickly. Uh, and then we're just going to do close parenthesis. You can, uh, you know, say comma and then say, look, repeat five times, but we don't want this to repeat a certain number of times. We want it to just continue forever. We constantly need to be updating, you know, the seconds and the minutes and the hours and the days. So we're just going to set this as new timer. Uh, at basically every tenth of a second really is what it would be uh, at 100. So that's more than enough to even get our seconds accurate. So set that timer up, place that semicolon at the end, and next we're going to say, hey, looper, it's a timer. We want you to go ahead and start. So looper.start, and then open and close parentheses, 
semicolon there on the end. Now, enter return to go to a new layer. We're going to talk to Looper again, and we're going to add an event listener to this. And this is going to be a timer event dot timer. So basically, the, this timer event that we, we just set up, it's going to be every tenth second, which is this, this timer event timer, uh, it, it's going to execute this function. So we're going to name this function, I don't know, loop f, close parenthesis, semicolon. So every time that this timer here cycles through every tenth of a second, it's going to execute this function, loop f. Let's go ahead and create that function right now. And we'll just run a quick trace statement to see how quickly it's going to you know, punch out text or something. So we're going to say function, the name of the function, loop f. Open parenthesis, the word event. Uh, you can use you know, ev or eve or just e. Uh, I, I don't know. I tend to always type the word event. It's just kind of what I've always done since I started using ActionScript 3. Uh, event, and this is a timer event, as we specified up there, uh, you know, right here with the event listener. Close parenthesis, colon, and the word void. Open, curly bracket, enter, return a couple times, close curly bracket, up arrow key, and in here we're just gonna say trace, open and close parenthesis, semicolon. Within the parentheses, place two quotes, and within the quotes we're just gonna say, uh, the timer has cycled. And cycled, there we go. You know what, I can probably even make that. All right, there we go. I'm going to save this, and I'm just going to test the movie, and the output panel should pop up, and you can see the timer has cycled, the timer has cycled. Every 10 seconds, it's just it's shooting this out, you know, way more than one the timer has cycled a second. So that's going to be more than enough for us uh, to, to make sure that we're always getting an accurate reading and our time is uh, updating properly. So I'm going to go ahead and dump this line of code. That was just kind of there as a test. And we need to go ahead and declare two variables here, one variable to store the time and one variable uh, to go ahead, well, let's let's just work with, with the time, uh, with the time and date. That's, that's where we're creating variables to store that. So we're going to say var uh, time and the data type is date, space equals space, a new date. Open and close parenthesis, semicolon. All right, now we're going to go ahead we're going to create another variable. We're going to say var month. You can probably guess this is going to be storing a month, but the data type is a number. And it is going to be equal to time, which is this guy right up here. And you see he's just, he's a date right now. That's all he's equal to. Time dot get month. Open, close parenthesis, semicolon. So what's going to happen is the variable month, as soon as we launch this, because I'm, well, right now I'm recording this in December. Uh, this variable month is going to end up being equal to 12. So uh, we just we want to keep that in mind. Uh, actually, not technically 12, technically 11 because uh, Flash starts at zero. So really December is the 11th month. But we're going to fix a problem that that's going to cause a little bit later on. We're not going to get into it right now though. Um, so, but next we're going to go var and we're going to say date. Let's go with date or day, excuse me. And this also is a number. And this also is equal to time dot get date open close parenthesis semicolon and again create another variable and this guy's gonna be called year it's probably uh, getting to be familiar now and this is also a number equal to time dot get full year we want to go ahead and get the full year open close parenthesis semicolon all right great now that we've done that uh, we can actually go ahead and let's just try tracing time and as long as I did everything right there we should be good and uh, you can see every you know, really quickly, it's telling me it's December 5th, the time is 1619, which would be 419 in the afternoon. And you can see the seconds keep going up because, you know, it's being, you know, just recycled that quickly. So that's great. That's very good news for us because now essentially what we have to do is take that kind of semi-confusing looking data and turn it into data that fits into those couple text fields and just say, hey, look, dynamic text, take this data that we're getting and make it something we can read. So let's go ahead and, uh, well, let's go ahead and get the time, actually, uh, next. Uh, we're going to say var hour. This also is a number. And this is going to be equal to time dot get hours. Uh, open, close parenthesis, excuse me. And uh, semicolon. Next, we got to get the minutes and then seconds. So we're going to say minute. Whoa, try to spell minute correctly. There we go. Uh, number uh, is the data type is equal to time dot get minutes. Open, close parentheses, semicolon, there we go. And var, the name of this variable second, it also is a number, and it is equal to time.getSeconds. Open, close parentheses, 
semicolon. All right, great. So now that we've done that, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to basically talk to our text fields now. Let's start with date. So we're going to say date underscore txt dot. And you can see because we have that underscore txt, we've got all this nonsense showing up there. Uh, date underscore txt dot text. Uh, space equals space. So what this line of code real quick uh, is telling us, or what we're telling Flash is, hey, this dynamic text field, the text that's inside of it, we want to be equal to this. Uh, and that is going to be month, first the variable month, which remember is going to be equal to our month, plus, and we're going to say open and close, uh, actually no, we're just going to say plus uh, day, which is our day variable right up there, and plus year. Great. Now we've done that. Throw a semicolon on the end. And let's go ahead and test the movie. Alright, well, we're getting an error. Let's see what it is. It's probably something uh, relatively simple and stupid. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Um, to go ahead and fix that, we want to go ahead and open up the actions panel again. And all we want to do is we want to go in here and just, because this is a numbered data type, it's not really going to render in the way that we want it to. Um, but really, we, we don't just want this, just to give you a quick example, right now, if this were to show up as, as a string in here, it would say 11.52009 with no spacing or anything like that. So in order to make it more readable data, in between month and day, we're going to say plus, and we want to add a period, just to, or we could add a slash or something like that. I'm going to add a period. So that's a string, so we're going to say quote, quote, and we're going to add a period. Now, we want to make sure we put another plus mark because we're going to say, okay, take that number and you know, throw the number in there, then add a period, then add the day, and then here we want to add another period between day and year, and make sure you add year. All right, let's try this out. We're going to save it and test the movie, and voila, the date shows up. But problem, remember I told you I'm recording this in December. December's the 12th month, not the 11th. So what I want to do is I want to make sure here that in var month, uh, that this time dot get month, it's equal to that, sure, but we just want to say plus one. Because if I was recording this in January, the month would show up as zero, and obviously there's no zero month. So we're just going to throw a plus one onto the end of that line of code, save it, and let's check it out. There we go. 12 5 2009. We have time sitting down there. We'll take care of time in just a moment. So in order to make that work, you just want to make sure you throw in some kind of dividers, uh, you know, here using, uh, excuse me, quotes. Uh, they can be slashes, they can be periods, they can be hyphens, whatever you want them to be, uh, just in, be in between your variables, really, that are not strings. Because remember, we declared them specifically as numbered data types. So let's go ahead and uh, figure out what we have to do to get the time working. For the time, it's going to be very similar to date. Uh, but there's going to be a couple little things we need to change. But first, let's just target time.txt.text. And it's going to be equal to, we're going to start with hour. Remember, we have our variable hour plus, and we're going to add a colon right in there, plus minute, excuse me, it's just minute, plus, and plus that, that colon, excuse me, plus uh, second. And there we go. We're going to save it, and we're going to test the movie and see what happens. All right, you can see 1,625 hours uh, military time, and 58 seconds, 59, and there you go. Back to zero, one, two. Okay, and on and on and on. Now, I, if I had thought about uh, this before I started recording, I would have recorded at you know like four o'clock, so we could see that when there, when it's you know below ten minutes, only one number is going to show up here. Just like over here, only one number shows up with seconds. Um, I actually could go into my system clock and mess around with it and really screw things up, um, but. Just trust me. If it's if let's say it's 4:05 when I'm recording this, let's say 16:5:31. I want to say 05. So in order to do that, we just need to throw this within an if statement. Uh, so we're going to do that, and we're also going to do it. Um, well, well, let's do it with minutes first, and uh, we're not really well. I, I'll open up my system clock and I'll mess with it so we can test it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to comment that line of code out. Throw two slashes there, and we're just going to copy and paste. So we're going to start by saying if. And uh, we're going to say if mm, minute is less than 10, open curly bracket, enter return a couple times, close curly bracket. So if the variable minute equals anything less than 10, we want, 
and have this happening here. Time, you know, just like normal. Uh, but right here before minute, we're going to add in a zero, plus zero. Great. And then here to make sure that it resumes when uh, the minute is not, or when the minute is 10 or more, we're going to say else, open curly bracket, enter return a couple times, close curly bracket, and then we're just going to paste that original line of code in there. That nor that's just going to get us the regular time as we have it now. So let's just quickly test the movie, and we should see no change at all. You see that? Great. No change at all. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to bring out my system clock, and instead of being 427, I'm going to select the minutes. I'm going to bump it all the way back to like 404. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to save my document. I'm going to check. And you can see 1605. That's what that zero is. If we comment out our if statement, that would just show up as 16.5. So kind of a little neat thing to do. We can do it with the seconds too, but we're not going to right now for the sake of saving a little bit of time. All right, I'll fix my, well, you know what? I should probably fix my system clock right now before I forget about it. Um, but we're going to be messing with it uh, in a moment anyway. Let's go ahead and bump this back up to uh, whatever it should be, 28, 29, probably 29. Hit OK. And uh, all right. The one last little thing we want to go ahead and do is correct the military time. Now, I know for most of you who are watching from foreign countries, this is the way you normally look at time. Here in the U.S., we have the two cycles of 12. So beyond 12 o'clock, I look at 16:30, and it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean anything to me as far as time is concerned. Uh, you know, if now if this said 4:30, I would know exactly kind of like the time of day and everything like that. Now, if this is how you look at time, you're done. You can leave this just like this. But if you want to correct it, uh, or you know, I call it correction, but really, you know, it's you know, for some of you, it's going to be messing it up. Uh, but for me, it's correcting it. So I'm going to correct this and make this say 4:30. But what I want to do is you know somehow make it so that you know prior to noon 12 o'clock in the afternoon it's going to go 1 through 12 and then at noon it's going to reset 1 through 12 so what i'm going to do is go ahead and add another chunk to this if else statement we're going to start by changing here if to else if because right above it we're going to create the if part of the statement so again we're going to say if hour is greater than 12 close parenthesis, open curly bracket, enter return, close curly bracket, and hit delete a couple times until else if moves right into place. There we go. So if hour is greater than 12, basically if it's 13 to 23 or yeah, up to 23, um, go ahead and we're going to say time. I'm going to copy this whole line of code right here. Paste it right in there. The This time we're going to say hour and we're just going to subtract 12. Because you subtract 12 from it, you subtract uh, 12 from 16, you're left with 4. All right, so that should be it. We're going to save this. We're going to test it. And if I did everything right, it's going to say 431 and 54, 55, 56 seconds. So there you go. Just like that, in about, I don't know, 20 minutes, we have created a clock. And you can see here the seconds. We have no zero. You can go ahead and throw that in there using another if-else statement. Um, we're not going to do that, though. Uh, but in about 20 minutes, we have created this digital clock and calendar. You can throw this up on your website. It's going to grab the clock information from the user's clock. So you should be good. And uh, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed something. I hope you learned a thing or two about ActionScript 3.0. Uh, if you enjoyed it, even if you didn't enjoy it, go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com. Thanks for watching.